with everyday tensions, with everyday stress. And a matter of fact, if you don't believe me, Jesus said the very thing. He talked about the word or the, uh, the, the sowing of the seed and that seed being the word of God. And he talked about different places that the seed is sown and it's typifying the heart or the condition of a person's life, their heart of reception of that word of God. And he talked about some falling by the wayside among the thorns. And he talked about some falling upon the stones and he talked about some falling on good ground. And that which fell by the wayside, the birds of the fowls of the air came and devoured it. Others began to spring up among the thorns and the thorns choked it out. And Jesus said that these thorns are the cares and the anxieties of life. Is that right? He said, for the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, the word of God has been choked. And I, I, I thoroughly believe this is exactly where our generation is today. Have we become so busy with so many things that the Word of God, the things that we can't absolutely see in the physical becomes out of sight, out of mind because now we're having to devote our attention to everything else and all of these other things are very important. Don't get me wrong, they are very important. They cannot be neglected. It, but I believe that Jesus really gives us an ideal about it. He shows us what priority is in the dealings with Martha and Mary. And he talks about coming into the house of Martha and Mary. And, and, and one of these were the sister of Lazarus that had been dead that Jesus raised back to life again. And he's sitting at the table with them. The miracle is there. And Mary is absorbed at the feet of Jesus Christ. And she is hanging on every word that Jesus says. And Martha is cumbered about many things. And the word cumbered just simply means busied or, or anxious and, 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 ang and having an anxiety of making sure all of these other things are completed. All of them were needful. And Jesus even recognized that they were needful. But he cried out to her and he said, Martha, Martha, you, you cumbered about many things, but one thing is needful. Uh, he was comparing, yes, these things are necessary for the daily life, for doing our daily duties of life. He said, but one thing is really priority above those things because if you can't get this one right, everything else really is just empty. Everything else really has no meaning. It has no weight. It has no measure. And, and Jesus said, Mary has chosen that good part. Amen. Not that these should not be left undone. But he said, if you will first, and this is where the scripture comes in, when he said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25 through 34, listen to what he said. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for the body. What you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. He said, the fowls of the air they sow not, neither do they reap, nor do they gather into barns. But your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add a cubit to his stature? How can he, and cubit was uh, equivalent to 18 inches uh, to the stature. How can you, by thought, add height to yourself? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Oh, they told not, neither do they spin. And he said, I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory, and remember Solomon was wealthy, Solomon was rich, Solomon was wise. The queen of Sheba came to be able to see the wealth and the wisdom of Solomon and she brought gifts of gold unto him. And he said, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. What? The lilies of the field. Hallelujah. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field which is today and tomorrow it is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat or what
what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all of these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all of these things. Listen, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What is Jesus saying? He's saying, yes, these are necessities. These are things that we have to do to to exist, to subsist in society, to to live, to be healthy, amen, to be clothed, to survive in the modern day society that we're in. It's just a little different. It's, amen, today it has a little bit more of a modern twist, but it's still the same issue. And every day do we not worry about what tomorrow holds and what next week holds and what's going to happen on our job and and I'm not saying that we should not be concerned to the degree of doing our best but there comes a place and a fine line between being concerned and and stressing yourself out over the limit and getting to a place that it becomes worry and that worrisome becomes anxiety and the anxiety will lead to depression and that depression will cause a, a spirit of oppression to settle in upon you a frantic nature that says I don't know how I can control everything well I've got good news for you today you can't neither can I control everything amen we just have to do one thing and then everything else is going to fall into place and that is put God first Amen. If we'll start putting God first, amen, things will run a lot smoother. How can you say this? You sound so absolute. Have you ever worked a job? Absolutely. Matter of fact, I've worked much of my life two and three jobs at the same time. Amen. While we were doing construction here at the church, full-time pastor, I was pastoring. We were overseeing the construction of the church. We were out here a lot of the time working on the building. What else was I doing during that time? I was also on the executive board at headquarters. I was printing a monthly periodical magazine. I was taking calls from those around the organization. I was having to go down to finance meetings four times a year. So in reality, I had three jobs that were going on at the same time. And the reason I say that was not to pat on the back, but I'm saying one thing that I had to learn to do because every day sometimes I would start out with worrying or at night I'd begin to worry, how can I get this done? There's not enough time. And I would find myself working so hard that I forgot God and it seemed like no matter how hard I worked, things just didn't work out right. But when I began by experience of waking up or in the night if I would wake up in stress I would just go to God in prayer and say Lord I've done everything I can do you'll not put no more upon me than what I'm able to bear I know that we can put more on ourselves than we should but I know that in your forgiveness and mercy that you can help me but God I'm putting you first when I lay down tonight I put you first when I rise up tomorrow morning I'm going to pray and put you first and I want to tell you by experience uh, all of that massive amount of things that had to be done it seemed like there was an invisible hand that was guiding and beginning to put things in place and helping me through it all. Some say oh it could have just happened that way anyway. I don't think so because I tried it many times the other way and it always fell apart. But when I said God you are the center of my life. I don't do these things except it be for you and for your glory. My friend God began to supply my needs Needs, and he took care of me all every step of the way. Can somebody shout amen and give him praise? This is important. This is exactly uh, whether you're in the working field today or you're retired. Amen. Everybody has a different level in their life. They have different worries, different stresses in their life. From early childhood into the development, the stages and the middle age, amen, to the young adults and to the elderly, each and every one has different stages of the development of life. But what we have to do is train ourselves to recognize that these needs, God was, Jesus was just simply saying, 
don't think about it. Amen. God loves you. He knows what you have need of even before you ask Him. And if you'll put Him first, that signifies that you trust God more than you trust yourself. That signifies that you have faith in God more than you have faith in yourself. Doing it without God says, I have faith in myself. Doing it with God says, I have faith in God. Hallelujah. This is the genesis of faith, my friend. If we can't be faithful over the little things, amen, we can't be ruler over the greater things. The church wants to be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. We want to see great miracles and great revivals, but yet we stress out over whether or not we're going to eat today or tomorrow. Amen. I believe that's a little contradictory. We've got to establish our faith first that says, I trust God. Amen. No matter what comes, I trust God. No matter what goes, I trust trust God. I choose to trust God. I choose to believe in God. I choose to stand upon his word. Somebody today give him a hand of praise and shout amen. Hallelujah. It's a choice. It is literally a choice. And when we come to needs, yes, there are stresses. And I, I don't want that to seem like it is belittled in any way or, 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 or made minute or, or seem to be something that is not important. It is very important. And it's the very thing that is really challenging the church world and the world today. And, and I believe we can all testify to this, that at some point we become so overwhelmed and we become so stressed, and we become, when it leads into a fear, we fear of failing. And the Bible said that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Perfect love casteth out all fear. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. So when we think or identify of the world, we, we first identify it as needs or necessities, the food, the shelter, the clothing, the provisions. These things are important, but we have to get to a point to where that we establish God as priority. In other words, don't forget God in the process. Don't forget God in the process. Don't think, well, you know, I didn't get to do it today and I can't, come, I can't come then or I can't do it then. I can't read my Bible now. I can't pray now. I can't do these things. Don't take that and, and, and let that build to a place that, 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 that it continually gets put off and, and then sooner or later you find yourself so far to God and you think, I'll just play catch up. You can't play catch up with God. And I'm not talking about Heinz 57. <laughs> I'm talking about that says, well, I, I can get it all in one service, in one meeting. I'll get everything I need. It's like learning a language. You can't learn a language. You can't cram for a language. Ask me, I know. <laughs> it's impossible. You have to do it every day. And the same is with our walk with God. It is an everyday consistent walk. It doesn't have to be two or three hours a day. If you can spend that amount of time, God bless you for it. But just make sure that when you start your day, you acknowledge God and say, God, this is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. This is why Paul mentions in Philippians 4 and 19, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What does this signify? What does it mean? Listen, he said, number one, God will do it. What will he do? He will supply. Amen. What does the word supply mean? In the Greek, it is a plero, which is simply means to accomplish, to feel, to be full. Uh, listen to this. I like this uh, 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 ideal from this translation of this word in Greek. It means to cram. <laughs> Amen. We may not be able to cram for it, but God can sure cram. And the word cram here is signifying like a net. If you remember when Jesus came out and the disciples had toiled all night long and didn't catch anything. There was nothing. No fruit in their net at all. No, no fish. They fished all night long and caught nothing. They worked. They toiled. They labored. They did everything they could and they caught nothing. Jesus came out. Hallelujah. And he called out and he said, cast your net on the right side and you shall find. Now listen, logic tells you that if you've been casting your net, you're sitting in a boat, you've casted your net over here, fish swim. <laughs> Amen. And if I've casted my net, 
logic tells me my boat is moving on the water. Sooner or later, I'm going to catch that fish if they're anywhere in the vicinity of my boat. But Jesus showed them something important. He said, I want you by faith. Amen. Even though you know it's empty, even though you feel that it's impossible, I want you to just trust me.